Mr. Isaacson, you and I have gone so long without seeing each other. <laughs> good, good to be with you once again, yes. <laughs> you guys hanging out together or what? Uh, we, we can't tell you. <laughs> it's a secret. I keep reading reports Hard of how non-effective a lot of these COVID vaccines are. Israel, who has vaccinated 30% of their population, they're seeing their a lot of their numbers still um, increase. It's very interesting information. Uh, herd immunity comes at about 75%. We're far away from it. We need uh, all we can get. Well, I'm interested That's to, to know what the of. real percentage of people that actually have already had it. Obviously, all we ever hear is just the the positive results, but so many people that you know don't have symptoms or or know that they had it just didn't bother to go get tested. I wonder what that true, true, true percentage is. You know. I know it's it's interesting. It I had one of my granddaughters had it, and her brother had all the symptoms but tested negative. So it just doesn't make sense that he didn't have it. Also, very odd. So and, I, and I think a lot of people that we don't know about have had it. So I wouldn't be surprised if twenty five percent of the population have rea have in reality had it by now yes i would agree with you it is also the flu numbers are non-existent this year well that just goes to show that the uh, flu shot works that's it Bern. you're right and the masks uh, yep see. all of the above a list out of the people that have been approved um they're in the agenda there's the round one list. i thought it was just a flu shot i couldn't see the mask doing anything yeah you promise <laughs> colds are down this year too if they, so if, they if if we paid them all of what they're supposed to get let's <laughs> no. hold their money <laughs> so holding their money always works <laughs> Because I get to call people and tell them my Elton Meddy was on the list. Mm -hmm. Then he got an email and told him they needed more information. Yeah, well, that's a good sign. Well, yeah, but it's we're trying to give it away and they're trying to keep it up. Not. No, they just have to have certain documentation. And if it wasn't uploaded, they asked for it. So if they're asking for it, that means they're going through that guy's application. So that's a good sign if they're asking. It's taking longer than any of us. Wanted. So, anyway, I gotta go because I'm gonna. We don't hear anybody else bragging, do we? Though. Nope. We don't. You know what that <laughs> means? Everyone's in the same boat. Same with the public health stuff. I talked to other counties. I I went through the checklist with with Zimmerman about getting it from the army mm -hmm. the, for the get the veterans. I can't get it. Yeah. I was not at the right place at the right time or. I'll touch oh, it. But if you're too, if you were in Vietnam, you automatically get it. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, not everybody in Vietnam was in combat. No. Of course. <clears throat> but they breathe the air. Exactly. <laughs> Mike, do you mean the Civil War or the Vietnam? <laughs> oh, that was funny. Revolutionary smart ass. I freed, freed the country so you'd be free. 
<laughs> Thank you for your service, Mike. Weren't you in Ramstein, Mike? You owe us treats, Chepro. <laughs> birthday what? guy is supposed to bring treats on his birthday month. Uh, yes. It's your birthday? No, it's today's Ken Chepro's 71, 71st birthday. It's actually oh, in the county happy code. Happy birthday to you. Thank Chepro's you. Chepro's at a loss for words. Someone make a note of this. Okay. <laughs> I can will, bring, uh, bring them next month, Ken. I will bring them next month. Nice. So what are we supposed to have? What treat? <laughs> Donuts or candy? You should have your secretary mark off the birthday so that they know. Okay. I Brilliant idea. Get <laughs> Traditionally, that's the uh, vice chairman's job to make that list also. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never get done. That's a new position. <laughs> oh, I should just speak into that. Okay, are we all ready? I'd like, it's um, 4.03, and I'd like to call the meeting to order of the Committee of the Whole. Uh, may I please have the roll call? Alan. Good afternoon, everyone. Alan present. Aids. Berman. Berman here. Brown. Brown here. Davis. Ford. Ross. Here. Iqbal. Gums. Gums here. Kenyon. Here. Tyus. Highest present. Kobe. Leonard. Leonard here. Lewis. Lewis here. Martin. Martin here. Molina. Molina present. Sanchez. Here. Shepro. Shepro present. Silva. Strathman. Strathman present. Sturgis. Sturgis here until five. Teppy. Teppy here. Weber. Weber present. Wernicke. Okay, we have a quorum, thank you. Uh, Bates, here. Bates here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who's just attended? No, all right. Um, before we do the Pledge of Allegiance, um, I would like to share with you a little bit about uh, the special flags that are soon to come up onto the screen. Uh, we had put out a, a call uh, to our young artists throughout Kane County, uh, ages uh, kindergarten through fifth grade. And last week we did uh, get some submissions of extraordinary artwork uh, done by our young, young art students. Uh, so those uh, flags are gonna be celebrated today. And hopefully as we get new flags coming in, um, every time we have one of our board meetings, uh, we'll be able to view these flags and not only celebrate our American flag that's here, but uh, the American flags drawn by our children of Kane County. So uh, with that, could we please have the flags on, on the screen? And we're gonna be rolling through those. And uh, Karen, uh, our, our notable recording secretary will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So I'll stand, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. So can we roll through those one more time so everybody can get a chance to see them? I, they're just delightful. Today's trivia question, what's the largest number of stripes ever to be on the American flag? Well, there's no. No Googling. 13? <laughs> right. 15. 15. The Star Spangled Banner has 15 stripes, and then it dawned on somebody that adding a stripe for every state was not likely to work. <laughs> they went back to 13, but the famous Baltimore flag has 15 stripes. Oh, thank you for that information. So I'm sure uh, that that's uh, that's lovely. That's um, nice, nice little fact. Uh, 
And before we continue on with the approval of the minutes, um, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, say happy birthday uh, to Kane County. This is our birthday month and Kane County celebrates its 185th birthday. So happy birthday, Kane County. Hey, and I look forward to uh, being um, in Kane County helping to celebrate its bicentennial in 15 more years. And that'll be one heck of a celebration. So for all of you board members who are continuing a lengthy uh, uh, stretch of service, uh, get planning. <laughs> and hopefully by then we'll have, we'll be done with our COVID crisis and being able to oh, be celebratory. Oh. <laughs> Knock on wood Hopefully. for that one. <laughs> Hopefully. All right. Um, now we have the approval of the minutes. And I would suggest that all board members who were not actually elected to office uh, uh, during for the September 28th board meeting, please abstain from this vote since you were not part of that discussion. Uh, so once... Uh, May I please have a motion to approve the September 28th, 2020 minutes? Martin moves. I would move it. And Mr. Good. Please have a vote. Roll call. Uh, was Martin. 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 Mm -hmm. Allen. Allen, aye. Bates. Bates abstain. Berman? Present. Brown? Brown, abstain. Davis? Ford? Four, sustain. Braz? Braz, yes. Iqbal? Gums? Gums, abstain. Kenyon? Uh, yes. Caius? Caius, yes. Kopi? Leonard? Leonard, yes. Lewis? Lewis, yes. Martin? Martin, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Changes? Yes. Chepro? Abstain. Silva? Silva, yes. Strathman? Strathman, abstain. Sturgis? Sturgis, yes. Tepe? Abstain. Weber? Weber, yes. Nikki passes. Passes. Thank you. Um, do we have any public comment? No. Okay. Seeing no public comment um, and no one is in the audience, I'd like to move forward to our presentation on the update of the Kane County Health Department COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Uh, this is intended for all board members to get the full information uh, as, a, as, a, as an update. I'm sure that you have been, at least I hope you have been in communication with your constituents in all of your 24 districts, uh, answering their questions about how we're going to be distributing this vaccine. Um, I would encourage um, all people who are listening online to not only contact uh, the Kane County uh, Public Health Department website for information, but also please contact your board members because they will be very highly responsive to you in getting back to you. Um, and of course, feel free to contact uh, myself as well. Uh, and I will make sure that it gets to the right departments and that we will indeed um, answer all of your concerns and questions uh, because there's nothing more important than keeping <coughs> Kane County healthy. Uh, we have moved in to, um, um, uh, one, one mitigation. Uh, so we can have some uh, opening of our restaurants uh, and of our health clubs uh, and entertainment venues with the, certainly with restrictions, but we are certainly moving in the right do direction and we want to continue to do that. And with that, now I'd like to turn our meeting over to Jared Sanchez, who will be leading our discussion today uh, on the uh, COVID vaccine rollout. So thank you, Jared. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm Jared Sanchez. For anyone in the public watching, I'm the chairman of the Public Health Committee. And so tonight's conversation, well, this presentation really from our health department is going to be covering the COVID-19 vaccine, the hot topic of the hour. Um, just a little over a year ago when the first cases, known cases of COVID hit the United States, and people didn't know what to make of it then. And by March, we were under restrictive orders. 
And the vaccine is the one thing that, that everyone was looking forward to, uh, to, helping us get back to normal. And now that the vaccine is here, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> We've been under these COVID restrictions, it seems forever. And um, so we do have a lot of uh, eagerness to get these vaccines. So as we discuss this, just realize everything that, that you're gonna hear tonight, all the plans that we have in place and the things we wanna do, these have been prepared over long periods of time and some of it going back before COVID and um, the, the, the amazing planning that our public health department has already been doing in the event of a pandemic. Uh, given the realities of COVID-19, plans had to be adjusted. We've had to adapt to unforeseen circumstances and situations. And that doesn't change at all when it comes to the rollout of the, the vaccine. Um, so I know that everyone is ready to get their vaccine, well, not everyone, but the majority of people are ready to get their vaccine now. And I can assure you everything you're gonna to hear tonight is leading us to getting those out to people as quickly as possible. Um, speaking with other counties, uh, colleagues in other counties, they're in the same position we are. A lot of Kane County residents feeling the anxiety, think it's, it's just Kane County that, that is experiencing this scenario and it isn't. Um, we're not alone in this. So just realize we are at the beginning of one of, if not the largest mass vaccination programs this country has ever seen. And uh, nothing is going to unfold the way it should and the way we think it should. But I can tell you this, everything you're hearing tonight is an example of us doing everything we can. So that being said, I will hand it over to Kathy Foster and Michael Isaacson of the Pub Kane County Public Health Department. Hi, I'm Kathy Foster, the Interim Executive Director, and I have Michael Isaacson, Assistant Director for Community Health, and also our Incident Commander for this um, pandemic. And Uche Anwuta, our, our Director for Health Protection, she is also on in case there's any questions. And um, I just want to say that um, we are so blessed to have you guys as our support. Um, it's very important, and um, we are just thankful that, you know, we have you guys, and we want to give you an update today, and hopefully this will answer some questions. As um, Mr. Sanchez said, you know, this is, you know, it's, um, it's rough because we're at the beginning, but we're, we like to think we're at the beginning of the end. It's just, it's, a, taking a long time because we have a lot of residents. So Michael, I'll let you go ahead and take it away with the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Director Foster. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Isaacson, as, as was mentioned. I uh, wanna share a little bit of information about what's happening with the current status of COVID in our community, and then get to, uh, as, as Chair Sanchez said, the kind of the topic of the hour and talk about our plans for vaccine rollout. So if I could get the next slide, please. So just a little bit about what's happening with the data here in Kane County. There are three measures that are used to determine what type of mitigation we have. Uh, as Madam Chair mentioned, just today we were moved to uh, mitigation level one, which we're thrilled about. Um, so you can see on the left there is one of the three data points that's used. And that is out of all the tests that are conducted for COVID in our community, what percentage come back positive? Uh, if you remember a few weeks ago, the goal was for us to get below 12% positivity. We were able to get below that number. Uh, you can see I've, I have the last 30 days of data represented here. The new goal is to get to mitigation level one uh, was to have that um, rolling average below 8%. So you can see over the last uh, two weeks or so, we've had a nice steady decline in the number of tests that are coming back positive, the percentage of tests that are coming back positive. So that's a very good indicator about what's happening in the community. Over on the right-hand chart, you can see the second measure that we look at, and that is staffed bed availability in our hospitals. So looking at ICU beds and med surge beds, uh, the goal is to be above 20% capacity at all times. And you can see over the past 31 days, we've, we've barely, but we have been over that level uh, every day. 
Next slide, please. And then this is the third and final data point that's used. And this is what was keeping us initially from moving into mitigation level one. Uh, this is the amount of hospitalizations that we're seeing that are due to COVID. So what we want is to see over a 10 day span, seven of those days to either be a reduction or to have hospitalization stay the same. If you look on the chart, you can see that last week we had four days in a row. Uh, so that kept us mm -hmm. uh, a couple days away from, from going to tier one. Uh, but as of the, the data that came out today, we were uh, able to hit the seven out of 10 days with a, a reduction or the same level of hospitalizations. So we moved to tier, to tier one. And next slide, please. So what does that mean? As Madam Chair mentioned, this is exciting news for many people in our community, uh, not only our business owners, but also many people uh, who would like to get out. Uh, we're able to, uh, to officially open indoor dining with some restrictions. Uh, so that's gonna be great for, for many of the restaurants in our community. Uh, you can see there, there are some restrictions, food must be served. So this doesn't apply to bars only. Uh, patrons should be seated at tables. It is much riskier for people to stand side by side at a bar, for example. Uh, no congregating at bars. Tables should still be spaced apart. Uh, and then we don't want people just standing around in groups. So uh, we are able to open some things up, but we do want people to still take some common sense precautions to protect themselves. Uh, also, there's uh, additional opportunities for recreation. And especially with the, the snow and the cold here, uh, this is something that I think is going to be very good for, for the residents of Kane County. Uh, we'll be able to increase the size of groups who are able to participate. Uh, and I know that, that for young people and adults alike, this is something we've been hearing a lot about uh, with people asking when they'd be able to return to these types of activities. And then finally, um, just what I'm highlighting here today, uh, meetings and social events. So as Madam Chair mentioned, we are able to now have groups of up to 25. Uh, or 25% capacity of the room, depending on the size of the room. Uh, so this is gonna be good to get people back together, not only in the faith community, uh, but in social situations, it will allow for businesses to host small functions. So again, we really encourage people to use um, common sense, to maintain social distancing, to, to wear a face covering as much as possible. Uh, but because the data has been improving, that's allowing us to move into this lighter level of mitigation here at tier one. Uh, one thing that I unfortunately do have to point out is that we are still seeing a relatively high number of deaths in Kane County due to COVID. Uh, so we had five deaths reported yesterday. We're averaging between 20 and 30 deaths each week. So even though a lot of our indicators are improving, uh, we are still losing residents to this disease. So even with the excitement of the vaccine coming and excitement with improving numbers in, in some cases, uh, this is still very serious and, and we have a ways to go. Next slide, please. So as, as Chair Sanchez said, we are building on plans that we developed quite some time ago. Uh, after September 11th and after the anthrax letters were mailed in, in 2001, 2002, uh, that's when funding really started to, to come to public health departments to really work on emergency planning. So back at that, at that time, we built our first plans to be able to either provide vaccines or antibiotics to the entire population, which meant we were training with first responders, we were identifying sites in the community that would be conducive to setting up clinics, and we were training our staff, working with the hospitals, et cetera. So we have almost 20 years of practice doing that. So we're very well prepared to be able to administer vaccine to the community. In the upper left-hand corner of this slide, you can see the cover of the state's COVID vaccination plan. So this is the guidebook that we're using uh, that tells us updated information about the vaccines that are available. Again, we have two vaccines available now, Moderna and the Pfizer, both of which require two doses. Uh, but this guide also gives us information about who's in each priority group. So if we go to the next slide, um, I'll show you just a little bit about what the timeline is estimated to be for this whole process. And I'm sure for, for elected officials that are participating in the meeting and certainly for residents who are listening in, uh, we finally have the vaccine. Uh, as, as Chair Sanchez said, we, we thought it would never come, but I just like to point out it's, it's actually pretty miraculous 
that for a disease that just showed up a year ago, that we already have multiple vaccines that have come to market. So uh, I, even though we, we have a much higher demand right now than we have supply, I think as I look on the bright side of things, it's, it's pretty exciting that we even have a vaccine that's gonna be available to our community and that we live in a country where we're able to distribute it, uh, even though it's not going as quickly as we would all like it to go, uh, but we have the infrastructure and we have the logistical capacity that we can push this vaccine out to people. One thing we like to point out with this slide is that this is in different phases. So I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a moment. Uh, but this slide does a nice job showing that those phases are going to overlap. So in 1A, it's, it's for healthcare workers and for long-term care residents. Uh, we've switched to 1B now as of Monday. Uh, the governor announced it for the state, but that doesn't mean that everybody in 1A is done. They're still going to continue over the next several weeks. Uh, likewise, 1B, which is the largest group um, that, that we have um, faced yet, that's going to continue for, for several months because in Kane County, that's well over 100,000 people that are in that group. Uh, next slide, please. So here's a few photos uh, from December 16th when the vaccine first showed up in Kane County. Uh, so this is Pfizer vaccine that was, that was delivered to, to a storage site at, at one of our uh, partner organizations. Uh, of course, if you go to the next slide, please, Blair, uh, the vaccine temperature is quite sensitive. So for the Pfizer, uh, it needs to be stored at quite a cold temperature. Uh, when it's in its frozen state, it actually needs a special ultra cold freezer. So there's some logistical issues around the country that we've been working on as local health departments and hospitals have purchased the equipment required to actually uh, be able to store this vaccine. Uh, so this is just a photo from one of our deliveries with the, the dry ice and packaging that the vaccine comes with. Next slide, please. So I mentioned that we are, are just moving out of phase 1A, even though there's still a lot of people uh, we may wanna reach. The health department and our partner organizations have primarily been focused on the healthcare community thus far. So that includes people who are in a hospital setting, but also providers who are working in the community. Uh, the reason that this group is a priority is because we are asking these people as part of their job to come into contact with people who may have COVID on a regular basis. So we wanna protect them. As I move over to the right side of the slide, that's for long-term care facilities and other congregate care settings. Uh, this group is on here because unfortunately across the country and around the world, We've seen it's been our older residents uh, who are more likely to get serious illness and potentially die. And, and unfortunately, it's been our long-term care facilities where a large percentage of the deaths that have occurred in Illinois have happened. So there's actually a national program where we're working with CVS and Walgreens, uh, where they're going on site to these facilities to provide vaccines. And as of last week, we had provided about 2,500 vaccines to long-term care facility residents and staff. And it's important to take care of staff in these locations uh, because the, vac the virus rather comes in from the outside. So for the residents who live there, uh, the virus doesn't spontaneously show, show up uh, in any setting, in any workplace. It has to be brought in by somebody from the outside. So by protecting those people, uh, we're also reducing the potential spread of the illness. Next slide, please. So here is 1B, which is where we are currently. Uh, as I mentioned, this group is quite large. Uh, the population 65 and over represents over 75,000 residents in Kane County. So that's gonna take us a while to work through and get vaccine to all of those people. You can see it also includes first responders, the education sector from early childhood up through 12th grade. Uh, the food and agriculture sector, the manufacturing sector, corrections workers and inmates. Again, those congregate settings are places where we're more likely to see outbreaks occurring. U.S. Postal Service workers, public transit workers, grocery store workers. Uh, those are all jobs that people are asked to go and interact with the public. Uh, we've asked our grocery stores to stay open. We've asked our, our manufacturers to stay open through this whole process. Uh, we have seen outbreaks associated with some of these locations. So that's why that group has been prioritized uh, to get the vaccine earlier. And then finally, our shelters and adult daycare. 
Uh, that again, in a congregate setting, you're much more likely to have spread. Uh, so people are more susceptible to additional illness. So looking at this group, you can see uh, some people are more at risk for serious illness and some people are more at risk for getting and spreading the, the disease. That's something that there's been a lot of national dialogue around in terms of how we choose priorities. Uh, we can protect the people who are more likely to die, uh, but then there's also logic that if we protect the people who are more likely to get it, that will reduce the spread of the disease and uh, protect everybody. So that's why I think in, at the national level and also in the state of Illinois, uh, they've come up with this large category for group 1B. And next slide, please. So we're really excited here in King County. We've had almost 44,000 doses of vaccine uh, have been delivered. It, just like the rest of the country, it's been a little bit intermittent how much has been coming to us. So it's been very hard for us to predict from week to week how much is coming. We had 13, about 13,000 doses that were delivered last week. We don't expect to get any this week. So when we do our planning and set our schedules, uh, we're being very cautious about scheduling clinics unless we really feel secure that we're gonna have vaccine on hand. And I know this is a major point of frustration for many people in the community. We're hearing from residents. I'm hearing from my friends. I'm hearing from my family. Why can't I just sign up and make an appointment right now? And perhaps you saw in the news today uh, around the country, there's many places in, in New York, et cetera, where they're actually having to cancel a lot of clinics because the vaccine hasn't shown up. So we're taking a more conservative approach to scheduling clinics. We wanna make sure that if we give uh, someone the idea that they can sign up for a shot, we wanna make sure that we have that vaccine available for them so that they can come in and get it. So what can you expect to see over the next few weeks? Uh, we do have a sign up where our residents can go they can register and on a weekly basis, we'll give an update about where information is about where people can go to register for vaccine. Uh, again, this is something that we want to very much temper expectations because this is just rolling out now. We just come into phase 1B. So when people go to many of the places where they can, soon will be able to make an appointment, uh, there's not appointments available yet. That's gonna change over the next few days as more and more vaccine comes into our communities, uh, not only through the health department, but also through the providers that we're working with. We have over 40 providers that have signed up uh, and have been approved by the state to deliver vaccine to residents directly here in Kane County. Uh, that includes pharmacies, it includes our five hospitals, and includes our three federally qualified healthcare centers. Uh, VNA Healthcare, Greater Elgin Family Care Center, and Aunt Martha's. So what our strategy is, is really to push vaccine out into as many different places as we can. We hope that that will make it easier for our residents to get it because they'll be able to go someplace where they're familiar, either to their own doctor, to their own pharmacy, uh, as opposed to uh, putting less emphasis on standing up big clinics where people are standing in line outside of a gym. We think this is gonna get vaccine to people sooner. Um, so what else are we doing? Ongoing discussions for specific populations. Uh, one role that the health department has is making sure that we are meeting every group's needs. So this includes looking at homebound populations. It means looking at senior centers that aren't in that national program, but where transportation may be a barrier to people. So we wanna work with our other medical providers to make sure that we're going into those neighborhoods or going into those facilities and making sure that vaccine is available. Uh, for us working with first responders, uh, it's easy for us to set up a clinic and make sure that our police officers, our paramedics, all the people that we're counting on every day when we dial 911 and they show up at our house to protect us, we want to make sure that they're being taken care of as well. And then certainly the same for schools. Uh, it's going to be much better for our community when we get everybody in school full time so that parents don't have to worry as much about remote learning. Uh, we want teachers and staff in schools to feel safe. So that's another group that we're going to be working with. Over in the right, we see vaccine capacity. It's been spotty thus far, like I've said not only in Kane County, but around the country. Uh, still, I'm an optimist. I'm, I think it's only gonna get better from here. Uh, in addition to, to the two vaccines that we have that are approved, uh, there's also a third vaccine Johnson & Johnson is creating that should be 
uh, going for emergency use authorization in the next week or so. That's a one dose vaccine. So when that comes out and becomes available, it's gonna be much easier uh, for the medical community to provide that because it literally cuts the work in half, uh, makes it much easier for residents as well. Uh, and we're continuing to increase the number of providers that we're working with. So again, our strategy here in Kane County is to push this out to as many providers as possible so that we can get that vaccine as close to our residents as possible. Uh, and then finally, the state will begin direct shipping to many of these providers. So this is going to decentralize our system a little bit in Kane County. Uh, now all of the vaccine comes through the health department and then we give it to providers. Uh, it's going to be easier when the state starts to direct ship to pharmacies and hospitals, et cetera. Uh, we're not going to have as much control over that, though. So that's something as we look at signups and registrations, uh, we had a, a very good conversation last week with our public health committee, just talking about how we have lists of people who've signed up. We know in what order people have signed up. But, but one thing that, that's a, a, a little bit of a um, complication is how a resident is going to sign up for a vaccine at OSCO is different than how they're going to sign up for a vaccine at Northwestern Medicine Delnor is different than how they're going to sign up for a vaccine at Greater Elgin Family Care Center. So with the strength that we have with, with private industry and uh, people who are, are coming to join us in this in terms of different organizations, we also add a little complexity because we don't have just one general sign up for people to use. Uh, so our hope is that that's going to make it easier for people in the sense that they're going to have more options, that they'll be able to find something that's closer to their home. Uh, but it does mean that people will be looking in different places. So one thing that we're working on right now, which should be launched here very soon, is updating the health department website so that we have direct links to all of the registration pages uh, for our different providers. So again, we haven't put that out yet because we don't wanna put it out and have no spots available. And actually Blair, if you go to the next slide, please. This is a sneak peek of what the um, state has launched this week. Uh, they have something similar. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on this slide, but I just typed in 60134 for the zip code. So I say, okay, I live in Geneva. Where can I get vaccine? You see a map populates and I can click on different places. So I clicked on it, the Jewel Osco over on Kirk Road in St. Charles. I can click on that. I can actually go to that website where I can see which spots they have available for me to register to get a vaccine. But right now there are no spots because they don't have vaccine yet. So again, we're, this is something that's gonna be coming and building. It's gonna be a great resource for people. Uh, but right now, until the vaccine really comes into the community, uh, even though I know nobody wants to be told to be patient, but this is going to take time. And we hope it's just a matter of days before we start getting more and more slots opening up in the community. And I also want to make a quick note about populations where maybe technology uh, is an issue. A lot of the reservations that organizations are using are really dependent on going to a website, using an app, things like that. Uh, I do wanna let you all know that we are partnering with senior serving organizations uh, so that if there are people who maybe are struggling with technology, uh, they can go someplace where there's a trusted organization, whether that's a local library, senior service association, the township office, and there's actually gonna be people who can help them register and make their appointments if they're not able to make them themselves. So we hear from a lot of concerned adult children whose parents live in Kane County and they say, my, my parents are never gonna figure out how to make an appointment clicking on all these different links. We're working with other providers in the community, hopefully that we can manage that and help people get the, the resources they need to be able to make an appointment. And then finally, last slide, please. As the vaccine comes out, both vaccines that are currently available are very effective at protecting the person uh, who's been vaccinated. It'll protect them from getting serious illness. But what we're still building data about is, is how much disease can spread once a person has been vaccinated. So what I mean is, if I've been vaccinated, I'm less likely to get sick, but I still could pick up the virus, go home, and pass it on to my wife. So we just want to encourage people, be careful, even after you're vaccinated, especially, in, and uh, Mr. Tepe said at the beginning, we need a certain percentage of our population 
to be vaccinated so that we can really reach that herd immunity. So we want to make sure that people are still wearing their face coverings and still practicing social distancing. Uh, I think we, we are, as, as Director um, uh, Foster said, we are at the beginning of the end. So we are getting close to being able to return to normal, uh, but we really ask that everybody really hang in there for a little while longer. And with that, um, I'll stop the presentation and we can, we can open it up for questions and suggestions. Here it is, I have it, yeah, I've got it. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. That was very informative. And now, uh, are there any questions uh, for the board? This is John Martin. I have two questions, if I might. Yes, Mr. Martin. The first relates to the amount that we've distributed thus far. We've we've got we've had forty five thousand doses delivered to the county. How many have we been able to administer? So we we have administered the health department itself, which is a, a relatively small player in the big mix, has administered about five thousand. Uh, we have delivered about 20,000 to our hospitals and that amount, the, the difference there is the vaccine that just came in on Friday that we're in the process of pushing out to our partners right now. So we've administered, I think last time I looked, uh, a little over 24,000 doses, 22 or 24,000 doses for Kane County residents. Uh, and then a lot of it just showed up on Friday. Some of it we hadn't even ordered. So again, with kind of the variability of, of the um, vaccine. Uh, I, I didn't really emphasize, and I should, because these are two dose uh, vaccines, many of these doses that are coming in now are needing to go to people for their second dose. So uh, almost 8,400 um, doses that came on Friday, those are going to partners so that they can administer them to people for second doses. So even though the number's a little bit larger, um, it's not necessarily all new people getting vaccinated. Thank you. And my second question is just to make sure I get my facts straight. Um, we've received a letter from Northwestern Medicine that says that they have devised a distribution method and we need do nothing more than uh, wait for them to advise us when we are in the queue or where we are in the queue. Um, and I know that people have been getting, um, cer certain people have been getting uh, vaccinated by DuPage Medical Group, are they, are they receiving their medicine uh, direct from the state or, is, or, or the federal government? Or is the, for example, use Northwestern as an example, is that coming from DuPage uh, for, from the relevant counties or is that coming from another source? No, great question. Currently, all the vaccine is coming from the local health department. So it comes from the state to the local health department, and then we we provide it to say Delnor, or DuPage County would give it to Central DuPage Hospital. Dale Berman, I have a question. Uh, yes, Mr. Berman. We uh, you're talking about different ways of uh, registering with all the different places that are supposedly going to give vaccinations. How do you guarantee that we're going to? handle those in one B before the other? Yeah, that's, that's also an excellent question. Uh, part of this right now, because the vaccine is coming through the health departments, uh, we have signed MOUs with providers where we're very clear that that's the expectation. Once it starts to shift where people are getting deliveries directly from the state, uh, as part of the state agreement, that's something that's understood between the organization receiving the vaccine and the state who's providing it to them. Now, does that mean that there's not gonna be people who slip through? We're giving millions of doses of vaccine in the country, so there's gonna be people who, who jump ahead in the line, but we're all doing everything we can to, to limit how much that happens. So for, for example, we're asking for, for uh, proof of age, we're asking for proof of employment, uh, so there are checks and balances that we're putting in place to make sure we're really getting the, the 1B or the 1A uh, category served. Very good. Madam Chair, Bern uh, Teppe here. Uh, uh, hold on, Mr. Teppe. We have a, a Mr. Ford is ahead of you. Okay. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, one of my questions is for uh, the seniors who are, are at home, who, who are not mobile or limited to mobility, about how can we serve them? Yes, very good. Uh, so, Ms. Ford, what we're doing right now is that's in our partnership with Senior Service Association and Age Guide, uh, where we are branching out. We'll be having a meeting uh, probably on Monday uh, with the townships and the triad groups and the, the different organizations in King County that are trusted, that work directly with seniors. Included in, included in that are organizations that provide home health services. So as we identify those residents who may be homebound, we're able to start making arrangements, again, as vaccine becomes available, uh, that someone can go in and actually deliver vaccine to them in their home. Okay, thank you. Just one more question then. Do we have a, a, at least a tentative date? On, I, I know we just got the vaccine Friday, but do we have a tentative date on when the next set of vaccines are coming in for this uh, tier two or, mm -hmm. or one B? Yeah, so we will be working with the providers that'll be standing up clinics. We're still, we're working with first responders. And then just over the weekend, uh, there was some new correspondence and information that came out about the, the um, developmentally disabled community and people who are providing care at home where they actually are, are being considered in uh, category 1A. So that's a population we hadn't reached out to originally that we're going back and kind of playing catch up. So that's where uh, the, the, the phases kind of overlap a little bit like on that chart. Uh, so the simple, simple answer to your question is that as more vaccine becomes available, the health department has clinics next week, which are second dose clinics for the medical providers. Uh, we're doing some work with schools to make sure that we can get them taken care of. And, but I expect that we're gonna have doses available uh, for the general public to register for in the next week or so through our partner organizations. And it could, it could be in a couple of days and it could, be, it could be next week. It really depends on, on um, some of the logistics of getting the deliveries and things like that. Um, can I just do a quick follow-up, uh, Mr. Isaacson? How many people do you think are in the developmentally disabled population here in Kane County? What does that reach? That, you know, Madam Chair, unfortunately, I don't have that number because that was not a group that, that I had in, in my plans. So we are working with um, VNA Healthcare and the Association for Individual Development. And there's a statewide organization called ARC of Illinois that we're going to be reaching out to uh, that I understand has those numbers. Um, so, so within the next day or so, I should have a better answer. And if you can provide that to us, I'd appreciate it. Okay, very good. Thank you. Mr. Tepe. Uh, yes, I have two questions. Uh, Michael, yes, um, sir. quite a few of my, the people that have been calling me have, you know, out of their own concern, have been registering at multiple places. Uh, and it's taking them a lot of time to try to figure this out. Uh, is that something you would advise or? I think if somebody has an opportunity, I, in my mind, if, if you look at your regular healthcare provider and then are checking, say, other pharmacies, I, I think that makes sense, depending on, on how uh, urgent somebody feels the need. If, if somebody's able to stay home and maintain their social distancing and things like that, mm -hmm. I think they can keep checking. And, and if they get an appointment in the next few weeks or next month, great. Uh, if they are, as long as people aren't making multiple appointments, that doesn't disrupt the system. So uh, I think it, even though it's an inconvenience to be looking in those different places, uh, hopefully what it's going to do is it's going to give them the opportunity to find a place more quickly, actually, in the end. Uh, and, and that's just because nationally, we don't have a centralized system for people to do this. Um, and then um, are senior services and the libraries and the townships set up at this point? Should we start referring people there or should we wait? I would wait, but just a few days. So, so we just had a discussion with Senior Service Association and Age Guide on Friday. Uh, I just collected a bunch of contact information and, and uh, people have had the really good idea to build on some of the work that was done with the last census, uh, specifically with the libraries and some of the outreach that had occurred, uh, that we wanna use similar models to that to do outreach in the community. 
Um, but I would, I would wait just, just again, just a, a few days. And then also I didn't mention it, but there is funding that's coming from the state. Uh, it's going to the Illinois Public Health Association, uh, but for the Kane and DuPage region, $14 million are gonna be made available. Much of that going to local community organizations to, to work with us to do outreach. So uh, we have a meeting about that next week. This grant is just started at the state level. Uh, and so we're hoping to be able to push a lot more, not only information out to community organizations, but actually funding to our local organizations so that they can help be messengers to, to get the word to people. Great idea, thanks. And, and uh, Michael, who's gonna be handling that distribution of that 14 million? How is that going to be handled? It's the Illinois Public Health Association is the grantee of the state uh, that's serving the Kane DuPage uh, region. <coughs> but so they, they uh, we did share with our community organizations uh, an opportunity to submit letters of intent. The funding opportunity has not been released yet to community organizations, uh, but I, I will be meeting with the Illinois Public Health Association next week. Uh, to, to have our initial discussion about how that funding is going to roll out. So that money is going directly to our not-for-profit partners and community partners. Correct. Very good. Thank you. Madam Chair, Brown here. If I have a uh, question if I could. Yeah, of course, Mr. Brown. Thank you. Uh, Michael, um, how does Mooseheart, the child city, it happens to be right here in my district in between Batavia and North Aurora, how do they fit into this? When um, are they going to be eligible for getting their students and employees and what have you, the live-in students um, vaccinated? I, we have Mooseheart on our list and I believe we already have a count of all of their staff and um, residents. So as a congregate setting, uh, that would move them up and as an educational setting, that moves them up. So uh, they may be a site that, that would be a good one to have one of our medical partners actually go there and set up a clinic. That may be easier than having everybody from, from Mooseheart transported somewhere else. So how does that work? How does the communication work on that? Do, do you as the health department notify them of that? Or is there someone there that should be, you know, contacting you, do you think? What I, just, be the best I, way? Just, I just wrote down a note. So I'll, I'll reach out to them. Again, the timing, uh, I just want to temper everything we say is, is it, it may be next week, it may be two weeks, it may be three weeks before we're actually able to serve them. Uh, but I will, I will follow up with them. All right, thank you. Sure. Just a note on that, the students who are less than 18 years old are not eligible. Yeah, great point, Uche. thank you. That would be primarily the staff and the seniors, perhaps in high school. Mr. Sanchez. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mike, going back to uh, the disabled community, can we reasonably tell anyone um, who is disabled that they can, or their caretakers to have them come into or to arrange to get a vaccine? Are we ready to, to do that at this point? We are, so we are we're, we're reaching out through the organizations I mentioned. Um, so I, we're, as you can imagine, we're being inundated with emails and uh, phone calls. So I, so I hate to just ask somebody to call us, uh, but we will put out, how about if we commit to putting out some public information uh, for that population, as well as working through those partner organizations. And then the simple answer to your question is yes, uh, we have plans in place to, to start vaccinating that population next week. Thank you. And uh, as if I may, as a follow up to that, um, many times uh, children uh, remain at home with their parents who may or may not be 65. Um, our, will the family also, the care providers of children who have developmental uh, disabilities, uh, will they also be given uh, the opportunity to have the vaccine? Yes, with, with new guidance that just came out this weekend, that, it, that is part of uh, one of the categories that was expanded. So that, that will be who we're reaching out to. Very good. And will you have specialists be able to handle that? Or you'll be working with AID because there may be some people who are uh, averse Yes, yes, shot. yes. And we've been having those discussions uh, and we understand that some people may be able to come to clinics. Uh, other people just, just as with the senior population, there may be more of a, a home visit that's required. So uh, we're, that's not my area of expertise, but we're definitely working with the right people, I believe. 
Excellent. Oh, with AID, you absolutely will. Um, Mr. Sanchez. Yeah, Mike, one more thing. Um, it, it's come up before um, people that aren't tech savvy, they don't have the technology to, to register either for our, our list or um, actually, you know, appointments for vaccines, they need help. I know we've talked a little bit about that and we were talking about working with some, some other partners on that. Can you give us an update on for those who, who need help registering? Yeah, absolutely. I, I anticipate that that will be rolling out next week where through the libraries and the townships, that information will be made available through channels that people are used to. So whether that's getting information through Meals on Wheels or uh, other services that people who are homebound may be getting, uh, we'll be reaching out to them with print materials so that they um, know that they have the option to be vaccinated. Uh, I think we had a, a discussion earlier in, in another meeting this morning talking about how even though somebody may be homebound, they may be having different people providing services in and out of their house. So um, they're not free of risk, uh, right? So we want to make sure that we do everything we can to, to get that population protected. Are there any other questions? Yes, Mr. Fraz. Yeah, uh, Mike, uh, Drew Fraz. Um, we're all getting quite a few uh, calls and emails. And I was just wondering if you could make your presentation, if you haven't already, but make it available to the county board office so they could share it with all of us. And then Absolutely. maybe that, uh, that way we could uh, avoid some calls going your way. Absolutely. And, and we've been discussing with Madam Chair uh, different communication opportunities where we're available to participate in town hall discussions uh, in your district, if you feel that that would be beneficial, we're, we're able to answer questions of the public, uh, if we can create a forum. I think most people understand that this is going to take time, uh, but they also want to make sure that they are doing everything that they can to, to get the vaccine as quickly as possible. So we appreciate that, and we want to make ourselves available. We're also talking about starting to do short videos, uh, maybe even on a weekly basis, where we can touch on different themes and different populations. Uh, so we're, we're working with the CEOs of the hospitals and our federally qualified healthcare centers. Uh, we have a meeting with them on Thursday to, to kind of launch that idea. So uh, we hope to be pushing much more information out to the public very soon, uh, but we want it to be actionable. So we don't want to, we don't want to send people to the website that says coming soon. We want to send them to a website that actually has uh, clinic spots available that they can register for. Okay, thank you very much and uh, uh, great job on the presentation and also thanks to the whole department for everything you're doing. I know you're, you're under a lot of pressure right now, so thanks. Thank you. And I'm Madam Chair. Chair. Uh, yes, who's that? Sure. Well, we, Brown here. I'm, I'm sorry. Brown. Brown, Mr. Brown, I'm sorry. Thank, oh, thank you, Madam Chair. I know it's confusing when people talk at the same time. Um, Michael, you mentioned that you would be willing to do, you know, town halls or what have you. Um, our mayor of Batavia, Mayor Shelke, every Friday does a, um, a broadcast on BATV. It's kind of a weekly update that he does um, to inform everybody as much as he can of what's going on in the community of, on all issues. Is that something that you would be willing to participate in as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, great. I'll talk to the mayor and uh, I'll, pre I'll probably be giving him your call. Okay, That's thank you, sir. Fantastic Madam Chair. idea. No, Madam yes, Chair. Sir. Who's that? Mr. Martin? John Martin. The, is it possible, I mean, this, this presentation, you know, is, is uh, worth its weight in gold from the standpoint of public information. Is it possible to send the YouTube a uh, copy of this to the to the people that have signed up for the informational uh, in, in for, that have signed up on the inter, informational portal on the on the health department site. If we could just send this out, absolutely. Yeah. I think that that's that's going to if there's seventy three thousand people that have done that, that's seventy three thousand people who are going to have a lot of questions answered. And and yeah, I think that's a fantastic idea, sir. And I've just been notified. Actually, I need to update the link for people to sign up for information. Uh, as you just mentioned, we, we've had a lot of people who've already been able to do it, but we've just switched platforms um, so that we have a little more capacity to be able to push information out to people. So prior to sending this out, and uh, I'll send a note to IT so we can attach it to the video for people who view it in the future, uh, but we will be updating that link uh, with the help of our IT department. Thank you. Madam Chair Sergis here. Uh, yes, Mr. Sergis. 
Michael, could you help me? I've had a couple of people reach out to me. Um, as this goes on in dates, we're going to have snowbirds returning. And some of them are saying, if I get my shot in Florida for number one, what, you know, what happens with my number two when I get to Illinois? How are we handling that? And I, and I said, I, I really, I don't have an answer for you yet. What, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm first thing that comes to mind is I'd be willing to trade with them and go down south and get my number two shot down down wherever they are. <laughs> um, but but I think that that's um, that's something we actually haven't talked about much. Uh, but we could easily set it up so for us it would be similar to them getting their first shot. Uh, I would defer to Uche Angwuda, who's on the call. I know we're using a statewide. Well, actually, it's a national. Is it a national or a statewide <laughs> registry, Uche? Um, yeah, they, are, they all receive um, some kind of information to say that they had their first dose and, you know, yeah, we can, they can come to our, our um, clinics. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Madam Chair. Uh, yes. Mr. Shepro. Yes, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to ask this question. Um, I know a lot of people have doctors or either the clinics that they go to in DuPage County and probably other counties as well, and, and probably vice versa, people coming to Kane. Is there a protocol or any sort of inter, inter, ongoing intergovernmental trading as to who goes where under those circumstances? Yeah, uh, that's a point that we've had a tremendous amount of discussion around. Uh, I think we always like to frame it that this is part of a national response. Uh, so the vaccine is a federal asset that's coming to the state level and then coming down to us. We're all in this together. So uh, certainly we want our, our neighbors on all sides of us to be healthy, not only because we're nice and we, we want them to be healthy, but also because if your neighbors aren't healthy, then that's bad for our health too. Um, so what we have, have really pushed is that it's for people who live and work in Kane County is who we're prioritizing at many of our clinics. Uh, with the private providers that we work with, their service area may cover multiple counties. Uh, so we do work with them to say, hey, this is, this is coming from our allocation. Um, so we, we'd like it to be preferential for Kane County residents, but we also understand that, that they're running a business where the logistics of trying to weed out people who may not live in Kane County is problematic. And we know, as you mentioned, that there are plenty of Kane County residents who work in DuPage County, who get medical care in DuPage County or Kendall County or somewhere else. So uh, I think that the short, the simple answer is we're all in this together. And so we're trying to get as many people vaccinated as possible. Uh, we just want to avoid bus loads of people coming in from another jurisdiction and, and taking all of our shots. But if it's people who, who live or work across uh, county lines, uh, that, that's something that's not problematic. Thank you. And then I echo, I think this has answered so many questions I had, uh, and I think it will do the same for the public as well. Very good. Madam Chair, sir, just again. I like that a great deal. Um, I, and just to follow up on that, um, Michael, could you share uh, for the board, what happens when, if you are getting your vaccine and you have your spouse with you or you're bringing, everyone is in the same group, but they have not all registered, will you be able to vaccinate that, that family? Absolutely. That extended so, family. Right, we are trying to move as many people through our clinics as possible. So, so within reason, we want, it to, we want people to make appointments and, and count as many people as they have so that we can plan appropriately. Uh, but we also, as long as people are showing up at clinics, uh, we wanna be able to move them through. Now, there's, there's some difference in terms of how health departments are running clinics as opposed to Jewel Osco maybe is running their clinics, for example. Uh, but based on conversations that we've had here, we want to make it as easy for families to move through as possible. Um, of course, if everybody shows up with their family of eight and they may only made an appointment for one, uh, that's going to be problematic for our process. Uh, but otherwise, we, we want to move people through as quickly as possible. And they will be then registered uh, on site. Right. Yeah, very good. Uh, Madam Chair, Sergis here. Yes, Mr. Sergis. Just a, an additional comment. I was uh, vaccinated on Friday morning 
Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, Michael, I found it extremely refreshing that one of the nurses there reminded me that we are pooling nursing students from across the county to actually have physical hands-on experience doing this. So you've really maximized the experience in so many ways. I wasn't aware of that at all. And I think kudos to whosever idea that was. Yeah, that's there's there's great teamwork going on, and that's something I should have put more emphasis on. At the clinics that we've been running, we have had nursing students from four universities. We have had paramedics and EMS helping us from multiple fire departments. We've had school nurses from multiple school districts, and we have a massive, robust medical reserve corps that not only have they been fantastic in helping us uh, here with the vaccines, but since February, March, through the entire process, we've had volunteers helping to answer the phones and do things. So uh, like you said, it's a great experience for students to get real life experience, uh, but it really is being at these clinics and seeing people uh, all come together is, is really uplifting to see um, just all the community coming together for something positive like this. You're trying to put together a softball game between the Aurora kids versus the Elgin kids. There we go, I like that. <laughs> I, I, I would like to extend uh, our sincere thanks to all of those volunteers and for their strong community support in working to make uh, Kane County healthy. Uh, they're truly to be commended for giving up their time and their talent to help us out. So a round of applause for, for the volunteers. If I might, um, I should mention on our vaccine page on the Kane County Health Department website, there is a, a button there for the Medical Reserve Corps. So if anyone that's listening and watching this wants to help out, that's a, a good place to contact. Absolutely, thank you. Um, now, if I may, we do have a couple of questions that have come through our YouTube channel from uh, the public, and I would like to take a few minutes to address those. Okay, <clears throat> I think you might have just answered this one. Our volunteers needed to administer the vaccine. Great, so absolutely, and, and thank, thank you, Chair Sanchez. So we, we are still uh, soliciting medical volunteers. Uh, we do have a link and, and I can uh, send it with the presentation, uh, but that absolutely, yes. And do you need volunteers beyond medical? Uh, yes, definitely. And, and so we call our Medical Reserve Corps, it's got the word medical, it's a national program, uh, but we certainly need non-medical volunteers as well. Perfect, thank you. Okay, next question. Why are college educators in live instruction lab settings being left out? Sure, that, that, there, there are a lot of, of great discussions to be had around how priorities are set. And when I'm talking to groups who are advocating for themselves because they're not currently prioritized, uh, I, I just encourage them to advocate at the state level. Uh, this is, based on science, it's based on risk level, but at the end of the day, uh, the recommendations that come to us have, have been uh, somewhat subjective in the sense that we're using objective information, but somebody's making a determination. Uh, so I expect that, that the categories will continue to evolve and change. Uh, I use the example for, for the developmentally disabled families earlier. That's one that, that once the information came to us, we said, yes, of course, that makes perfect sense. Uh, so if there's others in the community who have direct contact as part of their work, um, I've, I've worked with other groups um, who maybe are, are medically a little more fragile, who are saying, how come we're not on there? And, and I don't have a good reason that we can give them uh, other than that the, the list had to be made somewhere. So I encourage people to advocate to the state uh, for, for their own groups, definitely. Okay. This, I think, is the last active question. Uh, what is the COVID communication plan? Great. So we will be launching our new website. And, and thank you to our IT department uh, and Madam Chair and, and Chair Sanchez. Uh, we've been getting a lot of great input. Uh, also on the call, we have Susan Stack, who's our communications coordinator for the health department. Uh, so moving forward, again, I think Life is going to be a lot easier for us in terms of communicating when we're able to actually communicate 
actionable things. So once these slots start to become available for people, then we're going to be giving people information that they can actually use. So a couple of mediums that we're going to be looking at are the videos that we will be doing with community leaders, uh, inc including people from the faith community, the business community, et cetera. Uh, we will continue to send out our weekly updates so that people get up to date information on where they can get vaccine. Uh, we will have our new website, uh, our web page, I should say, launch that has the direct links to all of the different organizations. And then once that $14 million project with the Illinois Public Health Association comes into the community, a lot of that is going to be focused on communication. So we're really, uh, and trust me, we tried to get that money for ourselves as a local health department. We, we didn't get it, but we're glad it's going to our community organizations. Uh, and we're glad to have a seat at the table to help determine where the funding goes. But that's going to create a lot of additional communication uh, opportunities. So we're, we're going to, it's going to be a, a multi-tiered, uh, communication approach that we're going to be taking. And then I think now it's going to change over time too. I think that's another point to make is now we have a tremendous amount of demand, but we don't have supply. In two months, we're probably going to have supply and the people who, who wanted vaccine may have gotten it. Uh, but now we're going we're gonna to have to transition and really be working to reach people who are a little bit hesitant about whether or not they should get the vaccine. And we see that is like a 15 to 25% range in a lot of our surveys. Uh, it's not people who are dead set against vaccines, but they're just not quite sure. We need those people to get vaccinated. So our communication plan is going to have to shift and we're going to have to really be pushing and trying to get information to to at least let people make the right decision for themselves. And we're confident that if we give people the, the right information that, that they'll make a good choice. And another question. Uh, this is actually from board member Bates. When one of my constituents asks me how to sign up for the vaccine, what is the shortest and best answer? So I, right now we have uh, the link that's, that's on the page there. That is our new sign up opportunity where people can get the most up-to-date information on a weekly basis. Uh, but soon we will have our new webpage posted on the Kane County Health Department uh, web website, which is kanehealth.com. People will be able to go there and they'll see all the active links where they'll be able to go to the organizations to make direct appointments. So I would say the health department website soon is going to become the best one-stop shop. And I know there's links from the county board website as well. Absolutely. Uh, the county board website is, uh, it's prominent. It's right underneath the, uh, the flags. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Yeah, Madam Chair, Shepro. Yes, Mr. Shepro. Um, Michael, you did indicated earlier that the, the decentralization uh, was coming soon. And I think you said more about that, but I wasn't sure. How soon do you believe that that is going to happen? I, I would only be speculating, sir, because okay. I, I, you know, we, uh, I'm not sure. The, gov the governor may announce tomorrow uh, or he could announce it in two weeks. Um, is, the, is it dependent on basically knowing that shipments are either on the way or received? Is that kind of the, the magic decision there? I'm honestly not sure what all the, the rubric is that's, that's being considered for that, but I think supply has to be a big part of the equation, yes. Dave, just one follow-up. Uh, I've heard anecdotally people are claiming that we didn't get our full allocation, and then I'm hearing that that's because they didn't understand the numbers in the first place. That, For example, the number of doses didn't include round two. Uh, could you talk about that for a second, maybe? Sure. sure. I, I think at the national level, there's a lot of discussion. Uh, and part of it is we switch between administrations as, as new vaccine becomes available. I think people are still trying to figure out exactly how much is out there. Um, so I, I think it's just going to take a, a little bit of time for the dust to settle. I think perhaps there were uh, promises made that, that people don't necessarily feel were kept. And I think that there were unrealistic expectations in, in other places uh, where perhaps people expected more than, than they should have. Uh, so I think, I hope, I should say, 
uh, that, that very soon we're going to have a much better idea where we can have a stable supply that we can count on that we would be able to, to schedule clinics around. Um, but, but I know I just was looking at the news today, uh, even at the national level, there's still a lot of um, sorting out that seems to be occurring. Well, thank you for doing uh, a great part in helping to get rid of some of that uncertainty. And it, it is a logistical challenge. I mean, I mean, we, I don't think anybody has ever had this kind of, as you mentioned very early in the presentation, this mass distribution of a vaccine to go to our public. And we have got 534,000 individuals. Um, perhaps 30% of those are under the age of 18. Uh, so the rest are adults, and hopefully within the next six months, all of those adults, or at least 70% of that number, uh, will be vaccinated so we can truly get our economy in, in Kane County and the entire state of Illinois uh, opened. It's critically important that we all support this, and we do everything we can to encourage our, our neighbors and our constituents uh, to be, get vaccinated as quickly as we can. So thereby the pressure on you, uh, Kathy and Michael and Uche. <laughs> yeah. um, are there any other comments, Mr. Sanchez? Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. And I just also wanted to make one comment also that um, we have had uh, constituents and others reaching out to us, seeing if we're doing what we can to get more vaccine you know, from the state. And we've definitely looked into every angle that we can. And if there's any way we can get, end up getting more vaccine from the state, we'll be sure to find that way. But I think right now it's, it's a numbers game. The state looks at how much they have and the, the numbers they see for each county. And they're not, um, we're not involved in those conversations and those decisions. So we are definitely reaching out and making as, as much of a, a connection with the state as we can to, mm -hmm. to, to ensure that we're getting as many as we can. Yeah, absolutely. And the governor's office does contact me from time to time and give me updates of what is going on. So um, I am constantly saying vaccines and health, vaccines and health. I'm becoming a broken record um, that will continue to be a, a broken record and sing our song until we have 70% of our adult population vaccinated. And I think some good news, Madam Chair, um, Mr. Fonsuck from IT has just, just sent me a note that just during this meeting, we've had an additional 270 residents sign up to get information about the vaccine. So, so people are looking and, and we're going to be sharing that information on an ongoing basis. So I, I think it's exciting to, to see the interest that, that people have. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, it, any other comments, concerns? And hearing none. Um, I just got a text message, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is strange. I guess there, there's someone, uh, actually one of our aldermen at large uh, in Aurora who just received a text message from a lady who seemed of age. Uh, it sounds like that she's trying to find a way to get the vaccine. Where should she, I know we should go to the, uh, the website, but is there any other way she can be directed to somewhere? I'm sorry, I'm having the muffle. So someone who's right now as of age of 65 or older, that's probably under Medicare. The question is, are, are, the, are there vaccines at both of the uh, Aurora hospitals? Mm. I think the, the website right now is probably the best place for her to go. Uh, so that, that we can make sure that we get her on the appropriate list so we can make appointments. And then again, if that's somebody who may need some assistance, uh, we, can, we can work with the city and, and make sure to connect her with somebody that can help her register with, with a vaccine that would be close to where she lives. And um, if I may, uh, regarding to the comment about the COVID communication plan, um, if we can ensure that we have press releases going out uh, and perhaps maybe even a, a graphic that can be sent out to all of our newspapers as a public information um, uh, press release so that they know very quickly how to sign up to this, what it looks like. Um, you mentioned before that you're gonna have outreach to other community partners who will be able to assist uh, via phone 
uh, for registration if need be, uh, but there has to be, I know we're gonna be working on a non, um, non-technical platform uh, as well to make sure that uh, those individuals who have flip phones or are, don't have computers at home can get information about that. And probably the best way would be, would be either television or print. And one of the, the seven ways of communication. And I know you're gonna be working out towards that. Definitely. So are there any other questions or concerns? Hearing none and none online. Um, we have no ex executive session uh, is not needed. Uh, may I please have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Mr. Kenyon? Kenyon moves to adjourn. Mr. Mr. Brown seconds. Um, aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.